with my next guest from their hugely popular YouTube channel, Earl's Family Vlogs, with over half a million subscribers. Well, now this cute couple has a book out, and it's meant to inspire us during this really tough time. Let's introduce to you Army Officer Captain Harold Earls and his beautiful wife, Rachel. Good morning to both of you. Hey, good morning to you. Good morning. I'm glad you're joining us this morning. First of all, set the stage. Where are you right now? So we are right outside of Washington, D.C. You're home there, and you're raising two beautiful little boys. Yep, we have Leo, who's two and a half, and Wyatt, who just turned one. So then how did you have time for hair and makeup this morning, Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have the grandma visiting, so we could do this interview. <laughs> There's always like a secret helper behind the scenes. Yeah. When you look we, we almost had the two-year-old babysit the one-year-old, but we thought that was not a good idea. So yeah, putting out a bowl of water and hoping for the best. <laughs> not the way to go about this. Okay, let's sort of talk about the book. The book it came out June second. It's called A Higher Calling. Uh, what is this about, and and why do you think people should be reading it right now? Yeah, so I chose to climb Mount Everest. It was a longtime dream of mine right after graduating West Point. I just so happened to choose that in the first year of our marriage. So it intertwines our love story in our first year of marriage, but then going through something that was very dangerous and difficult. And I think particularly now during COVID-19, um, just, I mean, this is history in the making. So, right, this is a time in our life that we're going to remember. And so how we choose to live right now is so important, just like when we faced Everest. That's a chapter of life that is going to stay with us forever. So, Harold, you chose to climb Mount Everest. And part of me, as a wife myself, I'm, like, mad at you because you chose <laughs> to do this dangerous thing on the first year of your marriage, which obviously had your wife a nervous wreck. Do you regret doing that now looking back? Wow, that is a deep question. Um, would I go back and do it again? I want it. Um, but I'm incredibly thankful, honestly, for the opportunity and just really where I grew as a person. I think I grew so much because at the beginning, to tell you the truth, it was out of more of a selfish desire, a selfish pursuit to summit Everest. But what was beautiful and what you'll see through the story is how it transpired into something so much more than just a climb and how we grew together in our relationship because of it. Mm -hmm. And Rachel, talk about that for a moment. He's gone for a long time. At times you had little to no communication with him, wondering what's happening. How were you feeling at the time? And, and did this help you grow? Or did you have to sort of get over some resentment in order for the growth to start? Yeah, that's such a good question because I knew that resentment was such a real thing. If I were to sit at home, I would notice that, you know, and that would set in. I would know he was off chasing his dream and I was just sitting in the background and I didn't want that for myself and I didn't want that for a relationship. So I said, you know what, I'm going to take the reins of my own story. I'm not going to let fear drive it. And I decided to go travel. Um, I went to Guatemala and Ireland and Scotland um, and it was incredible and very empowering just to know that I could be good on my own as well. How, and, and so let's compare that to what's happening with a worldwide pandemic right now. We can sit and look at what's not working in our lives, whether it be a business that's taking a huge financial hit, if not altogether has failed at this point, uh, jobs that we thought we were so secure, and even relationships that seem to be on solid ground now aren't. Um, sort of set this move us through this and it's you you've kind of come full circle help us get there at least yeah. visually yeah i think that honestly we've learned a lot of this through failure um that i think that sometimes those moments you described aren't choices but i think we fail to realize that we have so many choices still that we can make just like we choose to choose love every single day i um we talk about in the book i actually our relationship started when my parents got a divorce so literally a month after we met they got a divorce and that was like crushing for me and my sister and we didn't choose that right so but what we realized is that love is a choice every single day and that's something that we're big on is like mm -hmm. choosing to find time for each other choosing to do little unexpected moments even during these times they go such a long ways a lot of your life is captured on video and then shared with the rest of the world are there moments that you think maybe this wasn't a good idea i mean people are really seeing intimate moments of your lives together you know, I think we need that authenticity, um, especially with social media. A lot of people want to put out just the perfect moments, mm -hmm. and I feel like that can be harmful. So we really try to show, you know, the ups and the downs and just be as open as we possibly can. But, you know, we don't have the camera rolling all the time, so we definitely protect those special moments between us as well.
And how's it been raising two kids also on video? I mean, there's a cool part of that that you're capturing so much of their childhood and they'll be able to go back and watch that too someday. But where's the line as far as making sure that they feel protected? Yeah, good question. Um, we love it because, I mean, it's all these memories of them that we'll just cherish forever. I wish that I had that of my own childhood to be able to look back on. I think I have like two videos um, that I love. So we really just try to feel it out with them and their own boundaries. If they're not feeling it, then hey, like there's no forcing them um, at all. So it's really just you know, what they want to incorporate, we just kind of roll with that. And what I think is beautiful about that is like, we have every moment from the baby's very first smile to the baby's first laugh to, oh my goodness, why it is now taking his first steps. And like, that's what's really beautiful, I think, to go back and look on and something that I think they'll appreciate going forward. Um, let's just sort of leave our viewers with something inspirational as far as moving through what's a tough time in your life and, and getting through this. And I, Rachel, I think you said it really good that you weren't just gonna sit back and watch everything unfold or collapse around you. You were gonna at least proactively do something. Right, right. Um, I think that kind of falls back on the title of our book is A Higher Calling. And so figuring out what that means for you. For us, it's something that we say at the end of all of our YouTube videos is love God, love people, make a difference and be thankful. And that's something that we try to live by every single day. And when you have a heart that's postured like that, it really does change your life.